Mike Clement, Carl Lafferty, two assistant baseball coaches here in Oxford. Excited to get them to join podcast 18, taking some time away from the fall baseball season. A, a lot of people resonate with the, the spring season, but you guys are out there grinding, getting this team ready for the fall. What are, what, how's it going in the fall season? We'll start with, with Coach Clem. How, how's it going? What are some points of emphasis when you guys get back together in the fall? Because not everyone has the same summer schedule, what they're doing uh, during the off season, but you have to get them on the same page by February. Yeah, good question. I'll let Laugh talk about the pitching side of things where it, uh, I think that's probably a real challenge for him. From an offensive perspective, it's fairly easy, um, only because, you know, in baseball, you, you can't get up on the mound and throw a bullpen every single day. Those guys, there's a real science to, to how they're worked up and all of that, uh, which Laugh will let you know. But from, from an offensive perspective, um, we're pretty structured and, and we, we start the same way every year and we have four or five weeks of skill instruction where it's really more uh, individual stuff uh, and, then, and then move into our team segment, which we're in the middle of right now. Uh, pretty easy from from an offensive standpoint, just because we can we can swing, we can hit every single day, and um, and that's what we try to do, honestly. And so um, this year's team, uh, again, probably drastically different between Laugh and myself from from what we handled. This year's team, we have a ton of returning offensive players, and so um, they were they were able to get into it fairly quickly, and and we were able to 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 get right into it just because guys had a pretty good understanding of, of, of what our offensive system is. Yeah. Uh, that was a really long winded answer, uh, by Clem, uh, to let you know, he has perfected teaching the art of the home run. Uh, (laughs) so, uh, this fall for our, for our incoming pitchers, uh, my job is, is picking up the, the ego and the pieces from, uh, his celebrated offense that, that comes back and uh, he does it. He's the master. You, you would think that would be the easiest thing to do. Like just teach everybody to hit a home run so we can get a point every inning. Yeah. I said point. That's what my wife says. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, um, you know, uh, piggybacking off what Clem said, you know, he's correct. There's a lot of returning faces on the offensive side. And uh, obviously uh, when I say known commodities, uh, they're just from the, the, the pitching perspective of it. Um, I think there's some known commodities and, and, and faces that uh, the fans have seen, but I think Clem's done a really good job with, you know, helping uh, some of these players even take a, a step forward on what they did last year, where you're seeing guys uh, hit with more power or be uh, more aggressive on the base path or, or tweak their game a little bit to help them. And, and, you know, the flip side for us on the pitching side is there's a, a lot of new faces. Um, the challenging thing in the fall is, uh, you know, kind of like Clem said, figuring out what you got because you can't get up on the mound and throw a bullpen every day. You can't pitch live. And so I think the the first half of this fall through the in, uh, individual skill uh, in, in the bullpens, it's, it's getting in your terminology and teaching your, your, your pitching system uh, how we kind of go about our business. And then as we, you know, get through the first inner squaddings, learning the new guys. Um, whether you recruited them or because of COVID watched a lot of them on video and didn't have a chance to see them in person. We're really trying to get to know who they are and then, you know, continue to to give them a good development plan moving into the spring. And then uh, with the returns that we have, giving them a good blueprint of, Hey, this is what we were last year as individually. And this is what we want to improve on. So I think it's been a lot of that. And uh, for me, uh, I've been excited about the new guys, seen some really good things. Uh, Some old guys taking a a step forward and becoming (laughs) Uh, looking like they can fill a a bigger role than they were in last year. So, uh, you know, so far so good. And from my perspective. Yeah. Do you enjoy that challenge laugh? Cause you send two guys to the bigs from your weekend rotation, your closer, you guys have to put the pieces together now and, and figure it out from almost scratch at this point going into 2022. Yeah. I, I think that's uh, I think that ha- that's part of college baseball. I think that, you know, usually uh, in one phase of the game, you're, you're revamping sometimes, you know, sometimes it's a, it's an overall deal, uh, but you're always tweaking, revamping, looking at something. You know, very rarely do you have it where you, you bring in a, a lot of a, of a veteran offense and a, you know, a veteran staff on the mound. So I think that's the exciting thing about our jobs period as coaches. Uh, the challenging part of it from the, the going out and the shopping or recruiting, so to speak, getting them on campus and, um, you know, watching, uh, Watching uh, Doug Nikhazy come here as a ninth grader on a visit, uh, be in the Grove when they're when they're uh, carrying the goalposts through after we beat Alabama, 
uh, me telling him we do that every weekend, uh, <laughs> and then him uh, graduating to the, the the legend that he was on our field, and you know a second round draft pick and getting you know seven figure signing bonus. Yeah, I'm super glad to to get you guys together because I think already we, we see the the chemistry that y'all two have from working all these years together. Uh, just talk about your relationship, uh, Coach Lum. You can start just what it's been like working together, growing together, and building this this program as an entire coaching staff, but but particularly you two since I've got you sitting here at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had zero gray hair seven years ago, and. I got hired here and uh, work with work with laugh every day. And uh, I have a lot of gray hair now. Um, and so uh, that's uh, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, no, it, it's awesome. Uh, I think I think laugh would agree that we spend more time with each other than we do with our families, whether we want to or not. And uh, and I think it's that way, not just in our program, but but around college baseball for the for the higher level programs and the the, the programs that get after it from a recruiting standpoint. And um, you know, oftentimes, uh, and, and it is, it's a big deal who you work for. Talking about Coach Bianco, and he's so loyal to us. And um, you know, that that part of it is great. But from from an assistant coach's standpoint, um, there there's two paid assistants in college baseball, and and so they do the lion's share in any program of the recruiting and uh, are around each other every day, help build a team. And so from, if I'm being honest, from that standpoint, that, that that's a really important relationship as far as just well-being of life. And so uh, not only do, do he and I get, get along really well, um, our families get along really well. Our wives are the best of friends. And so all of those things are really important. And I don't know, I don't know that it could work uh, at least for me, if it wasn't like that. And so um, that's the personal side of it. And I think that's what you were, what you were going for. And that's, that's really how it is. Just, just being completely honest. We like, we love to have fun. Um, we love to, to, to bust each other's chops a little bit and our players know that. Um, but I think our players also know that this is just who we are. Uh, we, we, for good or for bad or for better or for worse or whatever. Um, it's just who we are. And I, I think that's part of the reason we, we, had an element of success in the last uh, seven years that we've been together. Yeah, I think I drive him crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty convinced of that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think it's a, it's a good, when I say a, a balancing, uh, just a, a balancing of personalities. I know, at least from my perspective, there's a lot of times that, you know, I bounce, whether it's uh, professional, whether it's personal, I bounce a lot of stuff off him because he gives me really good perspective and has a, a different viewpoint uh, and a way of looking at things than I do. Um, and professionally, it, it, to, to echo what he says, I mean, I think it's uh, when he and I have been coaching a long time and I think uh, continuity of a staff, um, you know, it goes back to Coach B. And uh, and again, I mean, I've been here forever. I'm like a like a cockroach, man. When the, the lights turn on, I, I scatter and dive. Uh, but it's because it's a really good work environment. Um, you know, not only, you know, working for Mike and working with Clem, but it's, it's also the, the rest of our staff from Gouda and Cleary and Slav, like they're studs. And I think, uh, you know, across the board, while we have different personalities, I think the, the thing that excites me uh, about walking in the door every morning is everybody is focused and committed to doing everything they can to help us win a national championship. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, I think people really get outside in our office. They get outside themselves. There's, uh, it's one of our core covenants, the, the selfless aspect of it. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I think that's huge. It, it makes, it makes coming to work every day fun. Um, you know, everybody has stuff in their job. That's uh, that kind of drives them a little crazy, but you know, every day that I wake up, I'm, I'm fired up to come in. Yeah, I just took my dad on a, a tour of the facility, and I think this is something else you're, you're hitting on a little bit uh, when he was in town uh, a couple weekends ago. And walking out of there, I, there's sometimes I just I, – I, I, if you pinch yourself when you're like, there's a baseball facility that's better than some minor league fields sitting right here on our campus. Uh, and I think you're hitting on that as well, to be able to have the facilities, the work environment, all of that kind of stuff. Does it ever set in for you, Coach Clem, that it's like every day we, we have this available to us and, and you guys get to use it a lot more often than I do, obviously? Yeah, uh, that that's not lost on me, and I don't know uh, I don't know why I have the well, probably part of the reason I have the perspective is I've been fortunate enough to coach it at least at the Division One level at four different programs and four drastically different programs, 
Um, and so when you, when you're at a place like this, um, where the people make it really, really cool. Um, but also those people baseball is important to. And so a uh, byproduct of those people, baseball being important to those people is a facility like you were talking about. And so, yeah, I, I was a, um, uh, I don't know, to put it, put it nicely. I was a average baseball player. Um, and so, uh, yeah, pulling in here, I pinch myself probably weekly, like, all right, they're paying me to do this. I'll just continue to try to fool them a little bit and, uh, and, and keep going. But yeah, it, especially when fans get in the stands and our facility's awesome. Uh, it's great, but the environment with which we, we get to coach in, um, I, I have found myself, especially early in my time here, coaching third base, hoping for a home run, like let's, let's, let's get the, the liquid in the air and right field. Um, just the environment's really special. It's a, the best way to describe it is college football atmosphere in a college baseball stadium. And we're one of a handful that have it. And, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not lost on me for sure. It's not something I take for granted and I'm glad I don't. It's the facilities, the atmosphere, the SEC, the coaching staff, and, and laugh. You get to use that as a, as a recruiter. Uh, what's it like when you pitch this program to kids and, and you say, I mean, you have to see it to believe it sometimes. No, uh, for sure. Everything that Clem just said, but uh, even giving some uh, a shout out to Mike again uh, from the recruiting aspect of it. You know, when I, I, I talk to kids from, I mean, from California to South Florida and everywhere in between. And one of the unique things that we do to get our brand out there so that, you know, kids across the country can see this place uh, come through the creativity of him uh, from our, our website, uh, you know, putting out episodes of Ole Miss baseball this season, you know, you start talking to these kids and now as we've gone along, um, some of them are like, yeah, coach, I mean, I've been watching the season since like ninth grade in my, you know, my, uh, study hall class. Uh, so it's, it's cool. Um, and, and I guess for me that the different perspective I have while Clem has been everywhere, uh, and had different stops along his coaching path, I'm kind of the, uh, the, I say lucky because I've, I've been here my whole career. Um, uh, but I remember when the, what the stadium looked like when I played here, I remember what the crowds looked like when I played here. Uh, I think that's a, a big credit to the guy that sits in the corner office and the vision that he's had. And, uh, not just us, but the, the previous coaches we've had here, the previous players, uh, for turning it into something that the fans, uh, really flock to that now they, it's, a uh, it's kind of like part of their routine of what they do in the spring and it makes it for a, a super cool environment and uh, an easy place to recruit to. And on the same lines of recruiting, it's kind of an interesting thing that you're so willing and encouraging of the two sport guys. And we've seen now three of them come in here laughing and JRP, Jerry and Ely, and now Taiwan Malone, who's a big fella getting some reps at the, <laughs> the defensive line. And uh, what's that like for you guys getting to watch players that you see put in all this effort to be the best hitters or base runners or outfielders during the spring, doing the exact same thing during their falls and summers to be the best receivers, running backs and defensive linemen they can be. Man, it's awesome. Uh, you know, uh, one, they're, they're really talented scholarship players. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, conversations that can be had about the uh, inequities of, of scholarships and college baseball and, and how it relates to us. So it's a huge advantage when you get uh, the type of athlete or type of, of player um, that is a dual sport kid, but because he plays, you know, football, uh, we get the advantage of having a really good baseball player. And you know, Clem, those guys are, are three position players, but one of the things that, you know, really stick out to me, especially knowing Plumley and Ely for as long as we have, um, their makeup, their work ethic, their energy is unbelievable. And that's as impactful as their ability. Uh, and I know Clem spends more time with them than, than I do. Yeah. Uh, to talk about those guys individually, and, and like Laf said, it's probably easier for me to talk about <clears throat> Ely and Plumley than it is Ty right now, just because we haven't had him over here for sure. a season sure. yet. Um, those are those are special guys. Uh, take take <laughs> take away any athletic ability. Uh, this my my son is two and a half years old and and goes to like Mother's Morning Out for like two hours on a Monday and a Wednesday. Today is Halloween for Mother's Morning Out. And he has gone as John Rice Plumley, <laughs> like, uh, and 
And I hope he grows up to be like John Rice Plumley. I've, I've said that before and I mean it like, and I'm not even talking about as a football player, or baseball player. So both he and Ely uh, are as good as it gets. And I, and I think if, if coach Bianco were on, on this podcast with us, he would admit like, he's probably not the easiest guy to play for, or, or especially hasn't been in the past. And uh, only because it's really demanding, it's very structured. And I think when, when, when guys come into this program, uh, there is an element of player that comes in and walks on eggshells and it takes them a while to get comfortable here because of the structure, because it's demanding, because there's some, a level of intensity in our program. Those guys have, 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 have made it uh, easier for, for other players. For example, it is not rare to see those guys come out and like uh, walk down the tunnel and into the dugout, slap coach Bianco right on the rear end and be like, what do we got today, coach? Um, and that permeates through our entire program. So I give those two a ton of credit. Uh, I don't, I don't think it is any, um, I, I, I don't think it's coincidence that since they've showed up on campus, we have won like the third most games in college baseball. Um, they, they, and, and neither one of them have played every day, uh, right. but, but they are so important to our team. Uh, they bring just a different energy. There's something about being in a huddle uh, their whole life. Um, football's the ultimate team sport. Um, and there's a selfish element to baseball uh, where there's so much one-on-one, -on -one, like a pitcher against a hitter. It's one-on-one -on -one, uh, in a team sport, which makes our sport really unique, but can also add some, some really selfish elements to our sport uh those those guys have been in a huddle their whole life and they know like hey man if the right guard doesn't do his job I'm not a good running back or I'm not a good receiver or I'm not a good quarterback um and they bring that uh attitude to baseball and it makes it really really fun for us and our players yeah that's awesome that's I mean you see it just watching games their energy on the in the dugout and all the fun that's been like kind of thematic for the teams as you said they've for sure been a big part of it and I'm, I'm excited to see what their future holds with because they're so gifted athletically and, and we're going to see guys go pro and either baseball or, fo or football whatever like I said it might be but uh we'll know that right away and that's the difference between baseball and football right you get drafted in football and the next year we're waiting for Elijah Moore to make a play like he did this week and it happens baseball's not the case and you guys both look to extend your careers past the collegiate level laugh you were in, in in the minors what's that grind like and, and when you send players because we've sent so many guys to the minor league level what do you tell those players like hey this is an everyday thing and, and you really have to, to to work at it every day and love it if you want to finally get to the bigs uh first off I wasn't good uh I didn't like I didn't play like let's just be real honest um <laughs> But I, I did live a little it's bit. It's in the bio, life. coach. It's in the bio. Yeah, it's in the bio. To, uh, back, back when I had a good hairline. Um, <laughs> it is a grind. I, I don't think any any player, I, I think if you went to the and, and pulled the two World Series teams, the Astros and the Braves right now, and you ask every single one of them, go, hey, uh, did you enjoy your minor league experience? <laughs> uh, no. Nobody enjoys their minor league experience. Um and it's just not set up that way. Uh, I, I don't know that good, bad, or different. It's just just the way it is. But uh, you're right. You, you have to have a, a passion for the game. You have to have a, a serious, uh, you know, level of work ethic. And the, the cool thing about the Southeastern Conference particularly is it prepares you for that. Uh, it prepares you for that from, a you know, uh, an ability, like competition standpoint, just the plane of the game. Uh, but also handling all the other, you know, uh, external factors from the environments that you play in, from the media coverage, the scrutiny, all those types of things. So uh, it's exciting for me. I mean, you know, this year, uh, you know, one of, of Clem's guys, Nick Fortes, makes it up, hits like 11 homers, uh, you know, <laughs> just obviously learned well from Clem. Uh, you have things like that that's just, as a coach, it's, it's really cool to watch happen. Yeah, you're predicting my next question. That was that was what I was going to lead into. A guy like Nick Fortes finally gets there. As a as a coach, what's that feeling like seeing one of your guys not just reach the big leagues, but make a splash like he did? Uh, really satisfying. Uh, and and for me, my thoughts go back to man, the road was ne like to talk about Nick in, in particular. The road was never easy for him. Uh, he came and hit 190 as a freshman. Played behind Henry Lartigue, who's on our staff now who was an all-SEC catcher, uh, 
after Henry leaves the next year, Nick is here for his sophomore year. Cooper Johnson comes in, who's dynamic defensive catcher. And Nick played a lot of first base and was in and out of the lineup that next year and ended up having a really good year. And then was our three hole hitter on the best offense I've ever coached in 2018. And, um, just really satisfying that way. Uh, it's really hard. Uh, and I'm not even trying to play the, hey, we're on a podcast and people are, fans are going to see this. I'm trying to play the humble card. I'm really not. Uh, it is so little of what what I did. Uh, and, and with anybody that I've coached that plays in the big leagues, it's like, well, I got to throw him a lot of BP. Because uh, Nick Fortes was a really good hitter when we recruited him. He was a really good hitter when he was here. And he's a really good hitter in the big leagues and is going to be for a long time. And so like part of our job in recruiting is to get really good players and then not screw it up. And, and so uh, we try to maybe foster something along the way. Uh, but man, Nick Fortes was good when he got here and he's going to be good for, for a long time. So I'm just really happy for the guy. Uh, he makes me laugh. He's a hilarious dry sense of humor guy. Um, and I, so for me, when, when I see him, I'm uh, incredibly happy for him and his wife and his family. Uh, but I think of like, snapshots of time when he was here and not playing and he's sitting on a stool in our old locker room and Adam Kuffner, who is uh, our sports information guy walks by and Fortez has had like 40 at bats on the entire year and Cuff walks by and he looks at Cuff and is like, Hey, tell the interviewers, not today. I, 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 I no interviews today. And no one was asking Nick Fortez for an interview that day. Uh, but like, he's hilarious. And so uh, I think of things like that that are stupid, but uh, yeah, incredibly happy for the kid. Uh, he, he deserves it. Great hitter. I'm glad you hit on all that as well, because, you know, when Cooper came in, obviously he was so highly touted as one of the best high school catchers. And then Hayden Dunhurst is here now, and we all know what he's going to do over the next couple of years. And it's become like catcher you and Nick may have gotten lost in the shuffle of the big name kids. And now here he is finally getting a shine. And, and I, speaking of catchers, you're both catchers. Coach B was a catcher. What, what is it about catchers that like has led so many to become coaches? I, I get that you have to know the, the pitching plan and get a de defense lined up properly and all that, but it doesn't mean everybody can go out and then become a coach, but everybody in the staff has done it and they're doing it successfully. Uh, I'll go, go laugh here on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, you have to have the the least amount of ability to play the game, maybe. <laughs> um, I, I, if I'm being honest, if you're a good athlete or really can rake, they play at shortstop. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of times when you when you look at a catcher, for the most part, and it's di it can be different. Obviously, when you get to the big league level and you look at you know some of those physical just freaks, uh, but I think. You know, for a catcher, it's a, it's a lot about what's between your ears. And, yeah, having the, the perspective of dealing with the pitcher and understanding what the defense is doing and understanding both sides of the ball, um, but being able to use your, you know, use your head to, to be a, as impactful in the game as, as well as, uh, you know, your ability. I think that's where it comes, it comes from. And you got to be a little bit uh, maybe dumb, maybe crazy uh, to just sit there and let balls get pelted off of you your, your whole life. So maybe some of that. Bob, you have anything to add to that? No, I, th I, I think the other thing, very honestly, is we get tabbed the catcher you because we've had, you know, I think on every team we've had, we've had an all-conference catcher going all the way back to Stuart Turner back in 2013, I guess it was, before I was here for sure, um, and maybe even before that. But I think part of it is – that position is important. Like when Laugh and I go out and recruit and we talk about this guy or that guy behind the plate, uh, inevitably our, our conversation goes back to, hey, we can't recruit that guy because Mike is going to crush him. Uh, we just are really, we are, we were just really demanding it from, from that position. So if a guy can't do it and we know it, uh, even if he's really good offensively, we may recruit him, but we, we recruit him with the mindset that he's going to move to a different position. Uh, and so we know, um, how demanding that position is at Ole Miss. Um, and so it's important that we recruit a certain kind of guy. And so uh, we've been fortunate that, that we've had some, some really, really high level guys say yes to us. Um, but we just know from a recruiting standpoint that that's, that's the way it's got to work here. We're not going to give up defense for offense at that position, not here. We've been fortunate that those guys that we've talked about have been offensive guys, but uh they may have still really swung the bat well, but if they couldn't do it behind the plate, our boss was not going to allow them to stay behind the plate. So um, we just demand a lot out of that position, probably unfairly uh, in, so, in some ways, just because we all played the position. 
Um, but yeah, it, we just, we, we place a huge importance on that position in the recruiting process. Well, I think I could talk to you guys for another 45 minutes to an hour, but I'll cut off the rest of my questions. The last thing though, I know Brandon Hudspeth really upset that he wasn't able to do this with us here today. Uh, you guys cannot do his throw it in the dirt pod. He now, he missed his shot. This was his shot to chance uh, to talk to you guys. You understand? We get on that. Yeah, we're good. We're good on that. And I would, I would say it's a net gain. Hudspeth, uh, you know, opted out today. Uh, and so I, I think we had a better podcast because of it. Seth, the only thing I would say is over your right shoulder, there's a yellow towel. Oh, uh, is no. that yours? It is. It is. Hmm. Go Browns this week. Oh, wow. Wow. I wouldn't have guessed Browns based on Iowa. That's not what I would have guessed. No, uh, no professional cities very close. So uh, a lot of Bears fans, a lot of Vikings fans in Iowa, but Midwest team nonetheless. Uh, I've had a uh, lifetime of losing until <laughs> playoffs last year when they when they got after the Steelers, and hopefully they do it again this Sunday. Sorry, we're going we're going off the wrong wrong tangent. Here. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. But I do I really appreciate your time because again, this is a lot to ask for, and I felt like I learned a lot today, and I'm really excited to use this knowledge moving forward when we get to call on some of your games in the spring. So thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of the fall, and we'll see you here in 2022. You got it, man. All right, thanks, Seth.